What is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Now today's video is going to be something a little different. A few weeks ago on Instagram, I asked you guys if you're interested in a vlog style video and the majority of y'all said yes. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started on vlog number one. Okay guys, let me show you what I'm working on today. Right here is a lifted Tacoma. I haven't covered the lift video on this yet, but anyhow, I'm trying to put some angled axle sims right between the leaf springs and the axle. Now a simple task, such as removing lug nuts and the wheel lock, I ran into a big hurdle. Basically, that's what's left of the wheel lock right there. And this is partially my fault. So what needs to be done when you put aftermarket wheels in Tacoma, or Forerunner for that matter, you basically have to change out the wheel studs because the OEM Toyota wheel studs are not as deep as these. But unfortunately, these are ARP wheel studs and they don't come the exact length you need. So you basically need to take measurements and cut them down yourself. So anyways, these wheel studs are about 1 8 too long after I took some measurements on the inside of the lug nut. And basically this is one half of the wheel lock right here. And that's the other half inside this wheel lock removal tool. So I had to take a quick ride up to Harbor Freight and get this $40 wheel lock removal kit. But this thing just works like a charm. So six star review out of five right here. Definitely recommend this thing if you have a wheel lock that's broken or a lug nut that's stripped out. Read the reviews online, they said five stars. Couldn't believe it. Sure enough, first try, it got this thing off. So now what I'm doing over here is I'm making sure the length of the studs is perfect. This is about one and one eighth right there. And I didn't cut these other three yet. And so I originally had one and three eighths of depth, which is way too long for these lug nuts and the wheel locks especially. And then come over here to the driver's side. I think I cut the driver's side less than I did the passenger side. So I'm about one and a quarter on this side. So what I need to do is make sure that all six of these wheel studs are one and one eighth in order to accommodate the lug nuts and the wheel lock. Gotta get a replacement wheel lock, but it is what it is. Okay, this wheel stud issue took about four hours of my time today. One hour of that was allocated specifically for a Harbor Freight Run and a late lunch. Now the wheel studs are now one and one eighth long. That's what we want. I believe they were one and three eighths before and they were just way too long for this Magard wheel lock right here because it just wasn't deep enough. Now luckily, the Magard spline drive lug nuts right here, they're a little bit deeper than the wheel locks. I should have measured the wheel locks before doing the wheel pins, but it is what it is. But these are really nice lug nuts they have a rotating collar right there, so basically don't scuff up your wheel. And right there is approximately one eighth of the wheel studs I had to cut off right there. Thankfully for my grinder, I had a cutoff disc and grinding disc ready to go. So it took care of this thing easily. A little time consuming, but I'm glad it's over with. And now I need to order another wheel lock nut set in order to match these McGuards right here. Because I've only got five lug nuts right here. And I don't have any other McGuards in my toolbox. So it is what it is. Just a small nuance. Okay, now that the wheel stud issue is resolved, I'm gonna go ahead and start the filming of the angled shim that goes between the leaf packs and the axle. So I'm gonna go ahead and start filming for that. All right, one of the things I'm doing this weekend, this right here is my front yard tree. As you can see, I've undercut the bottom side in order to raise this thing up. Now, what my goal with this tree is, I'm gonna go ahead and chop this main branch right here, which will get rid of this foliage and that'll give a more symmetrical view of this tree right there. It's just going to grow out a little bit more right here on this branch. So I'm gonna go ahead, get the ladder out, borrow my neighbor's chainsaw, cut this thing up, and take this thing to the dump. Let's go ahead and get started.
Okay, next morning here, view the new leaf prune tree. That front branch is now gone. Thing looks a lot symmetrical. I'm pretty happy of how it turned out. So let me know what you guys think of this tree. You think I should have left that branch alone or you think it looks good as it is right now? Okay, it is Friday evening and I've had all this metal parts accumulating on my property here. So I'm gonna go ahead, take this stuff up to the metal yard tomorrow and get some money for this. Now I got all kinds of weights right here. So I got a 2000 Acura TL alloy wheel. This is from my neighbor. Let me go ahead and show you guys what a puddle does on the side of the road. And just look at that flat spot. That thing just cracked right in the center. So I helped my neighbor out, went to the junkyard and found a replacement wheel and tire. I think it was 50 bucks, which ain't bad. We lucked out. And then my neighbor's got an HVAC blower motor. I'm gonna go ahead and take that up. Some metal brackets from wall cabinets I never used. Front and rear shock and strut assembly from Project CB9. We got the lower control arms from Project CB9. We got these old hubs. And also for Project CB9, we have these aftermarket upper control arms. The only thing I needed was the bushings and the mounts of these things, so I pulled them off. I no longer need these units. Inside this bag, that's the old hardware from the upper control arms from Project CB9. And I got three old fence posts that my neighbor's throwing out. Okay, so with all the car parts, the wall cabinet brackets, the fence posts, the auto wheel, and the HVAC fan, what do you guys think the weight's gonna bring in for tomorrow? I'm gonna go and estimate 340 pounds. So let me know what you guys think, and I'll go ahead and reveal it at the end of the video. So tomorrow morning, I'm gonna load up all these parts in my truck, go up to the metal yard, and get these things recycled and get a check. Stay tuned. This afternoon is a little bit of a sad day. These wheels have actually sold online, listed on Marketplace, had a lot of interest. I've actually sold these on OfferUp. So I'm gonna go ahead and meet the guy here shortly, get my money, go ahead and put it in the bank. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys which wheels I chose later on. It's gonna be awesome though. Okay, so let me go and explain to you why I decided to sell these wheels. Now, as you can see with the BC Racing coilovers, there's plenty of clearance now. Now with the OEM shocks and struts, this lip right here was actually touching those. So the wheel wasn't able to properly contact this brake rotor right here. But now it's actually making the contact. But the main concern I have is this front trailing arm. I mean, there is just such tight tolerance right there. I mean, it is probably barely touching. You probably couldn't even get two sheets of paper in there. That's how close it is. Now remember these are 17 by nine plus 40 millimeter offset. I believe I need to get a 17 by nine plus 35 or plus 38 and be on the safe side. I don't want to run spacers. So that's basically the reasoning why I list these things for sale. And if they sold, they sold, which they did. But if they didn't sell, I was going to try and run it, maybe put a spacer in there, but I really didn't want to go that route. I'd rather have wheels actually fit properly. So that's basically the reason why I put these things up for sale. Now these wheels are a fantastic looking wheel and it's too bad that they didn't fit, but it's very strange why Enki makes some weird sizing on these wheels. It's either a 17 by eight with a plus 35, I believe, or a 17 by nine plus 40. And I do not want to run a 17 by eight. I want to stick with a 17 by nine. So let me go ahead and remove this wheel off the car, put it in the box along with the other three wheels and boxes. I gotta meet the buyer, get the money, put it in the bank. And when the new wheels arrive, I just can't wait to show you what I chose for this car. Time for a Project CB9 update. As you can see, poor car doesn't have any shoes or feet right now. Sold the wheels, the NK 17 by nines. I do have the coilovers in place. Have not released that video yet, but that's coming shortly. I'll be sure to get you guys some good coverage on that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do one small task on this car today, since it's a nice overcast day, temperature's ideal. So let me see if you guys can spot the problem here. As you can see, no keen ignition. So I take the steering wheel and it just steers and steers, no matter what direction, it doesn't lock. So I believe that the steering column wasn't set right when I connected 
the rack and pinion steering. As you can see, the wheels are straight right there. All right, let me steer this thing left and show you guys what's going on. All right, pay special attention to this noise right here. Hear that noise? Sounds like wires being stretched out. So I believe what's going on is the steering column when it was connected to the new rack and pinion steering. I believe there was one more rotation to left was made. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna disconnect the rack and pinion from the steering column itself. I'm gonna do one rotation to the right and make the reconnection. And hopefully we won't hear those wires stretching right here because I believe it's the clock spring that's being stretched out. So I need to go down here to the floor area, take that cover off, disconnect the rack and pinion from the steering column, make that rotation to the right hand turn and reconnect it and hopefully it resolves the situation. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of this and update you guys. Okay, about 25 minutes later, let me show you where I'm at. Front wheels are straight. Had to get the carpet pulled back. Had to remove this footrest right here with the deep 10 millimeters. There's three of those. Got those removed in order to have more flex on the carpet. Also got the plastic steering column cover removed as well. Two metal clips. And there's three plastic clips as well. One right there, one right there, and another one right there. And this, folks, right here is what connects your steering column to your rack and pinion steering. This is a very important joint right here. So on top of the splines that's on the steering column and the steering rack, you got two 10 member bolts, one right there on the top and one right here on the bottom. So what I did to resolve this situation, I went ahead and took this bolt out and took that bolt out and be careful not to drop the washers. And I took this joint and slid it all the way up and I was able to disconnect the rack and pinion. And then I took my steering wheel, did one full rotation to the right hand side, made sure the front wheels were straight and I took the U-joint that was slid all the way upwards, and I went ahead and lined up the rack and pinion splines and pushed this joint down, making sure to lock it in place. But before I started and removing that 10 millimeter, I took a Sharpie marker and marked these splines right here. That way I knew exactly where this U-joint had to be in position on this shaft right here. So I went ahead and hand tightened that top bolt right there, and I took the steering wheel and I rotated it so I can get access to the bottom bolt as you can see right there, that's the bottom bolt. So the most important part you cannot forget about is tightening this bottom bolt and this top bolt. That is very, very important for safety. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these bolts up, put the cover back on, put the footrest, and tuck the carpet back in place, and then I'll go ahead and show you guys the end result. Okay, went ahead and tightened up the two 10 bolts that connects the steering rack to the steering column, put the plastic cover in place, and put the metal clips in. Got the dead pedal reinstalled with the three 10 millimeter bolts. And we got the carpet set back in position. Okay, the wheels are dead straight. Let's go ahead and test the steering wheel. Let's do the right first here. See if there's any funny noises. All right, that's full lock right there. Full lock on the right. Okay, let's reset to the center. Wheels are on the center. And here's the true test. If our efforts paid off, Turn this thing to the left, see if we have any wire stretching sounds. Look at that, full lock, no sounds of any wire stretching. We are successful in that aspect. However, I'm still not able to lock the steering wheel when the key's out. That's just a small little issue right there, but I'm happy the wires aren't stretching right now. So we got the steering column resolved 90% of the way. Now let me go ahead and put away my tools and we'll call it a day for CB9 work. Now, I'm not going to leave you guys hanging with all that miscellaneous steel that I brought to the recycling yard. So for that aluminum wheel, that was 21 pounds at 60 cents a pound. However, all the miscellaneous steel, that's the charge code they used, that was 302 pounds, 6 cents a pound. So with all that miscellaneous steel and that 1999 Acura TL aluminum wheel, that was 323 pounds and $30 cash. So the way I see it, that's a few lunches right there, and that kept a lot of debris out of the landfill. Alrighty guys, hope you all enjoyed the first vlog style video for this channel. We covered updates ranging from the third gen Tacoma, the front yard tree pruning, metal yard recycling, and the latest status with Project CB9. These were just the highlights of one of my weekends, and if there's something you want to see more in particular of, 
feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Now, if you guys like this video and want to see more vlogs in the future, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic day.